How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ, the basics. In this episode, we're going to talk all about states. I'm going to go over the first 10 states, what they do, and I'm going to go over the general settings, removal conditions, and everything else pretty much for the states. So let's jump into this. The first thing I want to do before I actually go over them and, and talk about what each of these states do is go over the general settings and talk about all of the data points that you can manipulate here. First, obviously, the name. You can change the name of your state. What is a state? A state is something that can be applied to a character or enemy. It can do all kinds of things. It could make you burst into flames. It could give you regeneration. It can do whatever you want it to do. Let's look at everything that goes along with a state. An icon. A state does not need an icon. As you can see, if you are set to immortal, it doesn't actually show up as immortal. It's just like a hidden state that makes it so that you cannot be dead. The next thing is the restriction. It's kind of important to understand what this does, because if you just pick one randomly, your state's going to do something that you don't really want it to do. If you have no restriction, then it'll act as whatever else you tell it to do, and it will apply no restriction. The first restriction you actually see is to attack an enemy. This is like a berserk in most RPGs where it forces the target, it forces whoever is under the effects of this state to attack an enemy without giving any other options to use skills. The next one is similar to the previous one. It says attack anyone. This one is more of a confuse and it will result in the state holder attacking a random target, ally or enemy. The next one is attack an ally. This is strictly like a charm. If you have been converted to attack your allies by the enemy, then you'd be charmed. So that's what this state is for and the last one is cannot move this is a full paralyze so if you make a paralysis or a stun state like i have in this example this is the restriction that you would use the next is the priority it goes from zero to a hundred the only thing the priority actually does is order the states and presents them from the highest priority to the lowest priority this is built into your img system and you can see that some of these sv animations are available to use for example the sleeve or if you were charmed or confused, berserk, etc. In order to change these, you simply edit the states.png in your IMG system folder. That's for the SV overlay. For the SV motion is the way the actor is going to behave. They will switch to their animation, their side view battler animation that is writhing in pain as abnormal. Sleep, they will go into a sleep animation and then dead they will play their dead animation this changes what the actor will look like the next one is sv overlay and that is to apply animation over anything that the state is on and you can change these they're built in like this but if you were to go into your img system folder edit your states.png like you can change poison see this is the built-in poison sv animation you can literally edit this file and then whenever you use poison as an sv overlay whatever you changed that file to it will read that line so you can actually add your own custom ones in there there's another way to do that using a plugin state animations plugin from from Vigia Stella, but we'll talk about that later just using the engine you can still do that the next is removal conditions this first box says it will remove this state at the end of battle if it's checked it will be removed if it's not then it will persist into the scene map this next one is called remove by restriction will be replaced by a new state with a different action restriction it's kind of confusing, but what it means is if this is checked on your state, when you apply another state that has an attack res restriction, so any of these things, it will remove that state and apply the new one. It's a way to remove like your berserk if you become charmed. Moving on to auto removal timing. This is an easy to understand one. You select action end or turn end, and then you give the duration you want it to last. So say we make a protect that raises our defense and we want it to last for five turns. We would say five to five on the turn end. Or you can say until I go five times, my character makes five actions, you can say action end. It's up to you however you want to set up your state. Then you have remove by damage and this is a probability this is a percent chance of when you get hit does the state disappear so if it's set to 100 it's like sleep if you are asleep and if you get hit 100 percent of the time you're going to wake up so you would have removed by damage 100 percent on a sleep state it would be interesting if 10 percent removed by damage but then apply a confusion so this would be a really mean state attack an ally no attack anyone removed by damage only 10 percent you have to hit them like 10 times for them to snap out of it <laughs> Moving on. The next one is removed by walking. The state will persist in battle and any other removal conditions can be removed after five turns or by walking 100 steps. You can have multiple removal conditions or only one removal condition. 
It's up to however you want to set it up. Then the message is pretty clear. It's like, what do you want it to say if the actor is inflicted with the state, the enemy is inflicted, if the state is persisting? This is all for a first person battle. If the state has been removed, like very um, Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior style of messaging. And then in the traits, we've gone over the traits in the past, but let's go over attack traits. First of all, the attack element. If you put this in the traits, it will add this additional element to all of your attacks while the user is under the effects of this state. The next one is attack state. This means all of the user's attacks will inflict poison on their target, whatever percentage of the time you want it to be. So if it was set to 100%, then every hit, every time I hit something with this state on, it would poison them. The next one is attack speed. This applies a static buff to all of your skills, which applies an agility bonus to calculating who goes first and how many times do you go. There's a lot of battle systems out there and attack times plus will, your results may vary with attack times plus depending on the battle system you're using. But by default, it'll just give you an additional action. So if you say attack time plus one, then you're going to be able to do two things on your turn. It's really, really cool, but it, it does different stuff in different battle systems. And next up, we have attack skill, which is really cool. Now we can have our basic attack be replaced with a skill, whatever skill we want, say double attack, while under the effects of a state. That's actually new to MZ, and that's really cool. It's reminiscent of the Weapon Unleashed plugin from Yanfly, which I believe is going to be reported over by Vigistella. We'll look forward to that. I'm sure it'll do more than just attack skill. Okay, let's look at the states now. The first state, don't ever change this one. You need your first state to be dead, to be unconscious, to be uh, knocked out, to be incapacitated, something like that. But it needs to be your KO state because that's how the game reads state one. It's like your attack one is your basic attack always and your state one is the dead state. This means if you're dead, you're not going to get experience. You can make dead characters still gain experience if you want. Priority means it's going to be at the top. But 100 is at the top. State number one will be added when your HP hits zero. You can actually do some interesting things if you change this up, but I don't recommend you do unless you know what you're doing. Next one is the guard state. It's an interesting state that gets applied when you actually guard. What this does is it applies a special flag of guard, which reduces the damage you take by half, approximately. Some other calculations go on, I believe. Immortal, this is really useful for action sequencing, and it resists the state dead, so like when you're hitting the enemy and it's got a thousand HP and you hit like, you're going to do a three hit attack, but each hit is 500, you're going to go 500, a thousand, it's going to die. So your last hit is going to be like a, whoof, a miss or nothing. But if you have Immortal on, you can bang, 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 you hit them for 1500 and then you still kill them, you overkill them or whatever, right? So it's really cool. Don't change it. Use Immortal in your action sequences. The next one is Poison. Poison is the classic thing. I think it's overused in RPGs. It's a simple parameter, EX parameter of a negative number, which means every turn you're going to lose 10% of your HP. That's pretty harsh for a Poison. I definitely think it should be removed at the end of battle. Let me update that. The next one is Blind. This one reduces hit rate by 50%. You can see all of the stuff there. Very, very simple. The one thing I didn't talk about yet is the note tags and in the note box, you're going to find plugins that apply different things to states, multiple ways to manipulate states. If you use plugins, you're going to do that through note tags like this one right here, negative state. I'm using a plugin that will change the color of the state in game based on if it's a negative or positive state. So all of the negative states will be red and all of the positive states will be green. You would just put note tags in the note box and that's pretty much it. The next one is silence. This makes it so that the users cannot cast any of their abilities and you can seal skill types. If you wanted to update silence to apply to multiple skill types, you can do that. For example, I have multiple types of skills in my game, so I would seal elementalism and thaumaturgy and mysticism and necromancy and chivalry and all that stuff. The next one is rage. It is your berserk state and we've got the restriction of attack and enemy and abnormal for the SV motion and a rage overlay. You can apply animations through note tags as well if you wanted to apply state animations using the particle engine. Next up is charm. It will make you attack an ally and you can change all of these if you wanted to. Then you have sleep. This will put the user to sleep with the remove by damage 100%. So when they get hit, they wake up. I've added two extra states down here. Paralysis that set the restriction to cannot move and paralysis will last for three turns. Also, evasion rate goes down to nothing because if you're completely paralyzed, you're not really going to evade a lot of attacks, are you? In stun, it's a lesser version of paralysis. It doesn't last as long and it wears off quicker. Obviously, there's a lot of states in, in the default game that you can look at, but that's going to do it for this tutorial. Hopefully, you found it informative and helpful in some way, and if you have, give it a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. Come join us on the Discord. Big shout out to Dejica. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.